There are many extraordinary moments of life and death preserved in the fossil record, from doomed fights between predator and prey to ichthyosaur mothers giving birth to their live young. And one such example of an unusual moment, now frozen in time, is the death of a pterosaur caused by a plant. This unfortunate reptile, Ludodactylus sibiki, was a remarkable animal. First named and described in 2003, the fossil specimen of this organism comes from the Crato Formation, an early Cretaceous aged formation located in northeastern Brazil. This locality is known for many exceptional fossils of pterosaurs and other prehistoric animals, and during the Cretaceous period would have been the site of a shallow inland sea. Ludodactylus is currently only known from a single specimen, a very well preserved skull, but shows an interesting combination of characteristics. The given name of this pterosaur is actually a reference to this anatomical combination, since its generic name translates to play pterosaur, or more accurately play finger, but dactylus is here meant as more of an allusion to a common pterosaur name ending, such as pterodactylus. What does play pterosaur mean? Well, it's a pretty amusing observation by paleontologists that a lot of toy pterosaurs, which are apparently meant to be modelled on pteranodon as indicated by the iconic crests on the back of their heads, actually also include teeth despite Pteranodon being a toothless pterosaur. So the discovery of Ludodactylus, which had a Pteranodon-like crest in addition to many teeth, would seem to have been predicted by the toy manufacturers. In honour of this apparent foresight then, the new taxon was named Ludodactylus, the play or toy pterosaur. Other pterosaurs have of course since been found to also display these anatomical traits, such as Corchicephalus from the Isle of Wight in England. The specific name, Sibiki, is in honour of the great paleoartist John Sibic, who has illustrated a huge number of dinosaur books that I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. I've actually also met him and he signed a postcard for me, very nice guy. Anyway, Ludodactylus, despite having a similar crest to the famous Pteranodon, was not actually closely related to it. Instead, the paleontologists describing this reptile found it to be most similar to pterosaurs such as Ornithochirus, Coloborhynchus, and Anhanguera, placing it within the family Ornithochiridae. However, later phylogenetic analyses of pterosaurs have found that it should actually be located just outside Ornithochiridae, within the larger grouping Anhanguera. Like other Anhanguerians, this pterosaur had a lot of very sharp, conical teeth, and based on comparisons between the dimensions of the preserved skull with other pterosaurs, it likely had a wingspan of about 4 meters. But the most fascinating aspect to this fossil discovery is the case of this pterosaur's quite sad demise. As I mentioned earlier, this Ludodactylus appears to have been killed by a plant. This is indicated by the presence of a leaf within its lower jaw, the leaf being of a type that was stiff and lance-like, and with frayed edges on the lower point. What seems to have happened here is that the pterosaur, perhaps mistaking the leaf for a prey item, accidentally got it lodged in its mouth, where it probably pierced its gular pouch and became very stuck. As it had impaled the flesh next to its tongue, it would not have been able to get it out, and the efforts of the animal to liberate the leaf likely just drove it in deeper. The frayed end probably means that the leaf eventually pierced all the way through the soft tissue around the jaws, and drove the pterosaur to rub it against the ground in order to dislodge the vegetation. In the end, unable to properly close its mouth and therefore not able to get enough food, or possibly suffering from an infection, this Ludodactylus died and sank to the bottom of an ancient shallow sea, preserving a record of its tragic fate for over 110 million years, until it was discovered by humans who could tell its story. Specimens such as these are, to me, some of the most incredible of all the fossils we know of. They allow us a rare glimpse into not just an ancient organism's anatomy, but also an impression of their lives. The fact we can tell such a wondrous, almost fantastical animal as a pterosaur was suffering in a very similar way to organisms alive today, the example given in the paper is pelicans getting industrial debris stuck in their throat pouches, makes these prehistoric creatures seem much more like the very real animals they were. Animals that made mistakes and unfortunately died in a comparable way to modern wildlife. Fossils such as these are therefore invaluable to the science of paleontology, and we're very lucky to have discovered this specimen in particular. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about the tragic tale of Ludodactylus sibiki. As it happens, this is not actually the first time I've covered this animal on the channel. There's a very old Fossil Friday video I did on it back in 2015. I can't exactly recommend watching it though, as it's pretty cringy to me now. And I also made a pretty unfortunate error in one of the images I used. See if you can tell which one. Anyway, feel free to follow me on Instagram, I've decided to use it a bit more now, and I'm actually doing some weekly Fossil Friday posts on there, so if you're an OG Benji Thomas fan who actually remembers when I did Fossil Friday videos, they're sort of making a comeback. 
A big thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Jan Owen, Corey Peterson, George Fodgetek, Persian Boy, Mike Pace, Mayer's World, Dhruv Srivastava, Jacob Stewart, Matthias Bergscher, Nicole Bueno, Amanda von Nordek, Dominic Bathy, and Harry Evert. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.